a very good morning to you. Welcome to our online service today in uh, Great Clacton. Uh, my name is T. I'm the lay minister here in the Great Clacton Parish. And uh, today we're continuing the series on starting a new year. And as we started last week, we'll continue to look at Romans chapter 8. And we'll be looking at starting a new year, living by the Spirit. That is, the Holy Spirit. How we can live with the help of the Holy Spirit. And Mark will be talking to us about that in just a little while. But we're just going to start out this morning, um, first with a prayer, uh, and then with a, a kid's song. Uh, let me start us in prayer first. So, Lord God, we pray your presence here among us today. Even though we can't meet in person this morning, we are still together in spirit, uh, even if we're all in our own homes. And I just pray that your spirit will be here with each one of us as we approach you and desire to know you better, to learn more about you, and to be your people. Amen. And as I said, we are going to sing a kid song. We're going to be singing about God being a great big God. So if you know this song, sing it loud and sing it strong because we do worship a great big God. And if you don't know the song that well, listen in and you should be able to, to pick it up in just a verse or two. So let's sing. Just a quick notice before we go any farther, and that is that we are going to have, as we normally do after our online services, we are going to have online uh, tea and coffee uh, just after the service. What that means is it's a chance for us to visit with each other. Normally, when we meet in the church building, there's time to mingle and chat afterwards. It's been harder in the last 10 or 11 months, but we can do it safely outside. In our own homes, there's not that opportunity though. So we provide the online tea and coffee time so that we can at least have a bit of that interaction. Um, I believe it's invitation only on Zoom, but that just means that if you'd like to be invited, uh, send Mark a quick note and he will send you the, uh, the connection details for that. So I do hope to see you after the service there. We also have a few birthdays coming up this week. 
Uh, actually, Molly's birthday is today, so very happy birthday to you, Molly. But also Sue and Phil will have their birthdays in this coming week. So why don't we all sing happy birthday to them? So that's happy birthday to Molly, Sue and Phil. <coughs> mm. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Molly, Sue and Phil. Happy birthday to you. All right. <laughs> Moving on into our service, we usually start our service with a time of confession. And that is because every week, in fact, every day, all of us do things that let God down. That we decide to do things our way rather than His way. We sin. And the wonderful news is that when we are sorry for those sins, and we ask for forgiveness, that God always gives us that forgiveness. But part of being sorry is actually taking time to admit to Him that we have done these wrong things. And so we do that in confession. And we're going to say confession that's fairly easy for everyone to say together, so even, even you kids listening can join in that I will say one sentence, and then after that, um, you come, you join in with the words, in your mercy, Lord, forgive us. And you'll say that three times. So, we will just take a moment, close our eyes, clear our minds of the busy things around us, and just come in God's presence and think about some of the ways that we have turned against him, have rebelled against him in the past week. Lord God, for our actions which have angered you, in your mercy, Lord, forgive us. For our words which have offended you, in your mercy, Lord, forgive us. For our thoughts which have betrayed you, in your mercy, Lord, forgive us. May God, who loved the world so much that he sent his Son to be our Saviour, forgive our sins and make us holy to serve him in the world through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Well, I'm now going to turn things over to Rachel, who has a children's spot for us this morning. So, take it away, Rachel. Good morning. Now I wonder who watching has got an older brother or sister? Maybe you could put your hand up if you do. Well some of you will be the oldest child in your family, some of you might be the only child, but a lot of us have got older siblings haven't we? I myself have got an older brother. Now one of the things about having older brothers and sisters is that often they get to do things first. And you'll know that sometimes that is really annoying when we want to do it and we're not allowed, but our older brother or sister is allowed. But I think sometimes it can also help us if we're a bit nervous about doing something, it helps to know that our brother or sister has already done it and that they managed okay. Now I've got some pictures now of some of the things that our older siblings do first. Have a look at them and see if maybe you can relate to some of them. Or if you're the older brother or sister, see if you can remember doing them for the first time. So we've got going to school, learning to drive, having a sleepover, learning to ride a bike, getting a mobile phone, staying up to watch a TV show, getting a part-time job, getting your pen license, walking to school on your own, going on a ride or roller coaster. Well keep that thought in mind as we look at two verses from today's Bible passage. 
Romans chapter 8 verses 10 and 11 say this, and Christ lives within you. So even though your body will die because of sin, the spirit gives you life because you have been made right with God. The spirit of God who raised Jesus from the dead lives in you. And just as God raised Christ Jesus from the dead, he will give life to your mortal bodies by this same spirit living within you. This passage reminds us that because of our sin, our bodies will die. We know that and we're hearing a lot about that at the moment with COVID, aren't we? But even though our bodies die, God's spirit gives us life when we're forgiven through Jesus. And we heard about that last week, didn't we? Now, I don't know about you, but even knowing that, the thought of dying does make me a little bit nervous. And maybe you feel that way too. But in verse 11, we're reminded that Jesus has already died and been raised back to life. He is like the older brother or sister who's gone ahead and done it first. And verse 11 says that the spirit of God who raised Jesus from the dead is the same spirit who lives in us. So just as God raised Jesus from the dead, he will raise us and give us life by his spirit in us. Isn't that an encouraging thought for us when we feel nervous? Jesus has gone there already. He's done it already. So we don't need to worry. For any children here watching into the service, I wonder if you'd like to draw something during the service. Could you draw a picture of an empty tomb to remind us that Jesus has already died and been raised to life? And maybe we could write this verse in the opening of the tomb to remind us of that and to encourage us this week. Thank you, Rachel. That is a great idea for a children's challenge for you to draw pictures of Jesus' empty tomb. So he, the tomb where he's buried, but he's not in it. Because that's part of the great news of Jesus, is that even though he died for us, he didn't stay dead, but he came back to life. And he lives with his Father in heaven right now. And someday he'll come back to lead his eternal kingdom, and we can all be a part of that. Uh, we had a children's challenge last week as well. You may remember that last week we were talking about starting the new year, rejoicing in forgiveness. As I mentioned at the start of the confession, that whenever we tell God that we're sorry, he always forgives us, no matter what we've done, no matter how bad it may seem, he always forgives everything, which is a real reason to rejoice. And so some of our young people drew pictures of themselves rejoicing. So we'll take a look at these right now. And then we are going to follow up with another song. And I hope the children will stick around for this song before you go off and draw your pictures of the empty tomb because this is a song of celebration. It is called Jubilate, and Jubilate basically just means celebrate, rejoice. And it is a, just a wonderful song for getting up and dancing around the room to. So no matter how old you are, I, if you're able to, I encourage you to, to get up on your feet and dance around the room singing Jubilate.
hope everybody's blood is, is pumping and you're all very excited to be celebrating the Lord right now. But we are going to take a moment to quiet uh, and calm our hearts um, in a word of prayer before I hand things over to, um, to Gary, who's going to do the Bible reading from Romans 8, verses 5 to 17. Uh, and then after that, Mark will uh, sh share with us what he has to say about, uh, about these verses. So let's take a moment to turn to the Lord in prayer. Lord, we do thank you that we can celebrate you, that we can rejoice in being your people. Lord, thank you that you speak to us through your scripture today, just as you have spoken to people for thousands of years. I pray that you will uh, bless the words that, that Gary reads to us and that they'll speak to our hearts and bless the words that Mark has prepared to share with us his thoughts on your scripture. Amen. This morning's reading is from Romans 8 verses 5 to 17. Those who live according to the flesh have their minds set on what the flesh desires, but those who live in accordance with the Spirit have their minds set on what the Spirit desires. The mind governed by the flesh is death, but the mind governed by the Spirit is life and peace. The mind governed by the flesh is hostile to God. It does not submit to God's law, nor can it do so. Those who are in the realm of the flesh cannot please God. You, however, are not in the realm of the flesh, but are in the realm of the Spirit, if indeed the Spirit of God lives in you. And if anyone does not have the Spirit of Christ, they do not belong to Christ. But if Christ is in you, then even though your body is subject to death because of sin, the Spirit gives life because of righteousness. And if the spirit of him is who raised Jesus from the dead is living in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies because of his spirit who lives in you. Therefore, brothers and sisters, we have an obligation, but it is not to the flesh to live according to it. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the spirit you put the death the misdeeds of the body, you will live. For those who are led by the Spirit of God are the children of God. The Spirit you receive does not make you slaves so that you live in fear again. Rather, the Spirit you received brought about your adoption to sonship, and by him we cry, Abba, Father. The Spirit himself testifies with our spirit that we are God's children. Now, if we are children, then we are heirs, heirs of God and co-heirs with Christ. If indeed we share in his sufferings, in order that we may also share in his glory. This is the word of the Lord. Well, as you probably know, Bill Shankly, the famous manager of Liverpool Football Club, once said, and it's something that's often quoted, some people think football is a matter of life and death. I can assure them it is much more serious than that. That's, a, that's, a, that's an amazing thing uh, to, to say. But if you think about it, it only works and it only makes us smile a little bit. Because for most of us, life and death is the most important thing, isn't it? And that theme of life and death is a theme that runs through the whole of this chapter of Romans uh, 8. We heard it last week being introduced. We heard these words, therefore there is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Because through Christ Jesus, the law of the Spirit who gives life has set you free from the law of sin and death. And this week the words life and death will come up again and again as we go through this uh, passage. 
And last week we thought how rejoicing and forgive, rejoicing in our forgiveness can come uh, from hearing what was said there. And then the passage ended like this. It told us that this was for those who do not live according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. He's talking about the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of God. But we might want to ask, what does it mean to live according uh, to the Spirit? In other words, who do these first verses apply to? What does it mean to live according to the Spirit? Well, Paul goes on to tell us that, and that's in our passage today. I've just broken it down into, into four parts. I've given each uh, part a title, and each title begins with the, the letter R. Um, maybe that helps some of us to, to remember uh, what each of the sections is about. And the first of those is this. First, we need to recognise a division in the world. We need to recognise that there's a division in the world. And that comes in verses 5 to 8. Now, we often read about surveys that have done, are done of people. And they might be asked, um, are you a cat person or a dog person? Um, you might be asked, are you a, a tea cup person or a coffee person? You might want to say both. You might get asked, are you a nighttime person or a morning person? And sometimes you might feel like saying, well, well neither. <laughs> But Paul says there is a real and serious division here that we need to think about. It's a division that divides people between what they really want, what their minds are set upon. It's a division between those whose mind is set on what he calls the flesh and what he calls uh, the spirit. So verse 5 starts this way. Those who living, live according to the flesh have their minds set in what the flesh desires. But those who live in accordance with the Spirit have their minds set on what the Spirit desires. It's a question of what we really want in life, isn't it? Paul uses the word flesh here for, for our human existence uh, without God, without any reference to God. What we would be in ourselves if God didn't step into our lives and change things. And he says that there are those who've got their minds set on that, on what we want by ourselves, always wanting what we want. Whereas it's possible to have your mind set on what the Spirit wants. And the trouble with the first of those setting our minds on the flesh. And sometimes some translations of the flesh uh, put it as sinful nature. Um, some Bibles translate it that way. Your Bible might say that. Our minds set on the, the sinful nature. Again, it's just our sinful selves without God. The trouble with that is that the mind governed by the flesh is death, he says. But the mind governed by the spirit is life and peace. You see, the, the, the mind that's governed by the, the, the flesh, living that way, in the end leads to death. And he's talking about death in all its forms. It, yes, eventually leads to physical death, but he's also thinking of spiritual death here. Death, um, a life without God in it. And yet, the, the contrast to that is a life centred on the spirit he describes as life and peace. It's that contrast of life and death, isn't it? And then he kind of explains why that is in verse 7. The mind governed by the flesh is hostile to God. It does not submit to God's law, nor can it do so. Those who are in the realm of death cannot please God. Verses uh, 7 and 8. He says that if we set our minds on what we want, on, on, on what, the, the flesh, uh, on that realm that shuts God out of it, 
We're going to be hostile to God. We're not going to go God's way. We're never going to be able to please God. One preacher put it like this, that by ourselves we don't please God. We can't please God. We don't even want to please God. It's not saying that people who've chosen that path never do anything at all good. But it is saying that their the relationship with God is broken. And that will work out in it in their actions, in their thoughts, in their words, and so on. Just like a, a broken relationship in, within a family, sadly develops into the way people treat one another. A broken relationship with God will affect how we live. So there is a a division in the world. There's a division by those who who are going to live by the Spirit and those who are going to live by the flesh. And we need to recognise that. And we need to decide at what side we're on. Because these things are so serious. I'm just going to pause at the end of each section and use a prayer that Guy has written. These are in the coming week's prayer diaries. And so as we think of uh, that division, as we think of that decision, we can pray. As we wrestle with the deep issues of life, Lord, make us humbly aware of the power and attraction of the sinful nature and help us to cry out to you for help. Amen. But there's great news in this passage, and it is this, that if we've come to know, follow, and trust Jesus, if we've made that decision, he, God immediately puts us in the realm of the Spirit and the life that it brings. It's not a separate decision that we make. It's one that goes along with following the Lord Jesus. So when Paul says those who are in the realm of the flesh cannot please God, he goes on to say, you, however, you Christians who Paul is writing to, the Roman Christians, you, however, are not in the realm of the flesh, but are in the realm of the spirit. If indeed the spirit of God lives in you. And if anyone does not have the spirit of Christ, they do not belong to Christ. Through this passage, Paul refers to the Holy Spirit in a few different ways. He talks about the Spirit of God. He talks about the Spirit of, uh, of Christ as well. He talks just about the Spirit. But he's talking about this Holy Spirit every time. And he's making clear that those who've come to follow Christ are given the gift of the Spirit. And so secondly, our second R is that we can rejoice in the life that the Spirit brings. And that's in verses 9 to 11. We can rejoice in the life that the Spirit brings. Last week we thought about rejoicing in our forgiveness, but here is something else to rejoice in. And these two things go together. If we've come to Jesus for forgiveness, the Spirit of Christ, the Holy Spirit, is given to us. You see, Paul wants to reassure his readers that God's Spirit is living in them. If they've come to Christ and have been forgiven, they have been given the Holy Spirit who is at work in them. The Holy Spirit has been at work in them right from the beginning. The Holy Spirit starts by making us aware of our need of Jesus and his forgiveness. He then enables us to put our trust in Jesus. He enables us to start wanting to live Jesus' way. And he gives us the strength to start living that way. In other words, the Holy Spirit brings life to our hearts, our minds, and our actions. Verse 10. But if Christ is in you, then even though your body is subject to death because of sin, the Spirit gives life because of righteousness. And we're told that he doesn't just stop there. One day he'll also bring life to our bodies. That's what uh, verse 11 goes um, on to say. And if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead is living in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will also give life 
to your mortal bodies because of his spirit who lives in you. That was that great illustration that Rachel had for us in the children's spot today. That illustration of how Jesus has gone before us, rising from the dead, showing us that new life in the body is possible and we can follow in his footsteps, the Bible tells us, that when God brings the new heaven and the new earth, there will be resurrection bodies for people as well. And that means that the Holy Spirit gives life in all these ways, starting with our regeneration, as uh, theologians um, uh, call it sometimes, bringing new life to our hearts and minds, right through to resurrection, the new bodies that God promises. And uh, in Rachel's illustration of things that uh, younger brothers and sisters can do, in the wake of uh, older brothers and sisters, or the eldest in the family doing it, um, I kind of related to that as the, well, as the oldest in the family. And I think it was more me getting uh, jealous that my y- younger sister, and maybe brothers later, seemed to be able to do things um, at a younger age than I did. Which of course is not the Lord Jesus' attitude at all. He delights to have gone before so that we can follow in his footsteps. That's what he wants us to do. That's what he's enabled us to do. And that's, it's, well, all those things are something truly to rejoice about. We can rejoice in the life that the Spirit brings now, and we can rejoice in what he promises, that God promises he will bring in the future as well. And so we once again pray one of Guy's uh, prayers together. Thank you, O Lord, for your spirit of life and joy and peace. Thank you that we have hope for life through faith and trust in Christ, risen from the dead. May this message of life resound throughout the church in these days. Well, if God has done all this for us, given us his spirit, given us that new life, how do we respond? Well, Paul wants to tell us that if God has done that for us, we must follow and take part in what he's doing. And that will mean living differently. And so Paul says uh, in verse 12, Therefore, brothers and sisters, We have an obligation, but it's not to the flesh to live according to it. Of course, it's not to the flesh. It's not to our own sinful selves. It's not to our sinful nature. How could it be? That obligation must be to the Holy Spirit who brings life. Reminds me of the time when at the age of 22, I think it was, I was back in the classroom but I was back in the classroom not as a pupil but as a trainee teacher I had been uh, accepted on a a teacher training course and therefore had been put back in the classroom with a classroom of pupils uh, around me I was I was on the other side now I I was uh, a teacher not a pupil anymore And of course, that meant behaving differently. Yes, the surroundings were very familiar. Um, The the classroom uh, setting, the the, the subject was pretty familiar. I was teaching what I'd um, been taught. But now, I was the teacher. If the class had to settle down or had to be told off for doing something wrong, well, well, that was my role, that was my responsibility. And so I had to um, act Uh, as a teacher would and uh, not as a pupil would anymore and uh, as you can imagine that was that was very different and if we've gone from living according to the flesh to living according to the spirit and God has given us that spirit and done that in us 
We need to, to live in a way that shows it. And how on earth can we do that? Well, it's by relying on the Holy Spirit's power. Verses 12 and 13. This is our third R, relying on the Holy Spirit's power. Therefore, brothers and sisters, we have an obligation, but it is not to the flesh to live according to it. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the misdeeds of the body, you will live. We're to rely on the Holy Spirit's power. We're to know that we can't do this by ourselves. We need to pray for the strength that only the Holy Spirit gives. And we're probably going to have to keep on doing it because these things are a battle. Verses 12 and, well, verse 13 especially, emphasizes that we do this by the Spirit. But if by the Spirit you put to death the misdeeds of the body, you will live. I think it's talking to those moments of decision that we have to make. Uh, When we have a choice in our actions, are we going to uh, decide to go the Spirit's way and put aside what we want in our own selves? Um, Am I going to retaliate when someone uh, is nasty uh, towards me? Am, Am I going to do something I know that the Bible says I shouldn't do? With our words as well, am I going to say that uh, thing that I know will hurt or am I going to hold myself back? Am I going to think in that way that I know God doesn't want me to? Or am I going to think in the way that the the Spirit wants? Those moments of decision, we're told to to, to put to death the, the, the wrong way and to live God's way. How we live needs to fit in with who we are, who God has made us. And that leads us to another prayer of guys. We can pray. Lord, we confess that we are often tempted to live according to the sinful nature and to take the broad and easy path which leads to death. Give us by your spirit the strength and the desire to take the narrow path which leads to life. Amen. Well, many of us know that this is a, is a hard battle. I'm sure we all do. But there's some real encouragement that Paul wants to finish these, uh, this passage on. He tells us that we should be ready to receive the blessings of God's children. Listen to what he says in verses 14 to 16. For those of us who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God. The Spirit you receive does not make you slaves so that you live in fear again. Rather, the Spirit you received brought about your adoption to sonship. And by him we cry, Abba, Father. The Spirit testifies with our own spirit that we are God's children. You see, if God has given us the Holy Spirit, if we want to live by the Holy Spirit, we have the assurance that we're God's children. And with that come many blessings, blessings that we can receive, blessings that we can use and put into practice. In fact, there's no other better way to live. We're not any more slaves to fear. Imagine being a slave in a a Roman household without the the, the certainty of the future. But imagine being adopted into the family. And here it's adopted into God's family. Becoming a real child of the family. What a blessing. Being able to call the, the master of the family Father, just as Jesus did, Abba, Father. Being able to talk to him, being encouraged to do that, being, being 
being told that that's what God wants us to do, God the Father wants us to do. And not just this, being adopted as a child in those circumstances must have been amazing. But being adopted as a child in this family also meant something for the future as well. It also made the child an heir, an heir of all that um, the father wanted to give them. And so we read, now if we are children, verse 17, then we are heirs, heirs of God and co-heirs with Christ, if indeed we share in his sufferings, in order that we may also share in his glory. In other words, there's lots more coming. As an heir, you can expect lots more in the future. There's lots more to, to look forward to, even glory that's mentioned here. And that's what we're going to, to look on next week. So I won't stray into to next week's passage. But instead, once more, turn to prayer. Praise you, O Lord, that all who are led by the Spirit are children of the living God. Praise you that we are no longer condemned, but have been set free by the Spirit of life through Christ Jesus. And so to summarise, just these amazing verses, those who live by the Spirit, what will be true of them? What will be true of us if that's going to be our way of life? Well, we'll recognise the, div the division that there is in the world between living by the Spirit and living uh, by the flesh. We'll recognise that division and made that decision that we want to live according to the Holy Spirit. But we'll also rejoice in the new life that God's Spirit brings and will bring in an even greater way in the future. And we'll want to rely on the Holy Spirit's power as we want to put to death those things that no longer belong to this new way of life. And finally, we want to receive the blessings of being a child of God. Blessings that include being able to speak to our Father in heaven and blessings that will go on far beyond. Let's recognise the division. Let's rejoice in that new life. Let's rely on the Holy Spirit's power and let's receive and be ready to receive the blessings of being a child of God. I'm sure Mark would have had a lot more that he would have liked to have shared with us about those verses um, from Romans. Because I know from my experience last week that trying to, to boil down everything that you could possibly say into a sermon that fits within a morning service can be really, really tough. Um, and it's true of Romans in particular, but actually it's true about almost everything that we talk about on a Sunday morning. There's so much that we can sh look into and share and explore in the scripture that it's almost like we, we just don't have enough time to do it. And some of you may feel the same way. Some of you may wish that there was time to dig into some of the, the questions and the scriptures a bit more. And if you're one of those people, then I have the solution for you, one solution for you, which is our YouTube series, Ask a Pastor. Because that is a series where we are able to take time outside of a service like this to look specifically at well, at a number of different issues, but specifically at things that you and people like you have asked me and asked Mark and asked Phil uh, to answer. And sometimes it's questions about faith, sometimes it's questions about the Bible. Um, we've already done a series on, on prayer. We've looked at a few times at what is a godly response to what we're going through right now. Um, we're also in the middle of looking at and uh, answering questions about the Bible. And if you have a question that you would like to explore more, if you send that question to me or to Mark or to someone, it'll eventually get to me, then I will do my very best in the coming months to, to answer that question. Um, 
And usually we can explore topics um, and questions in more detail in that setting than we can do on a Sunday morning like this, where there just isn't all that much time. Um, having s said that, having uh, advertised that video series, we're going to move on to a song, which is a song that Mark uh, recommended as following on well from um, his thoughts on Romans 8. So we're going to sing together, King of Kings, Majesty. And then after this song, Jan will lead us in our prayers. Father, from today's scripture we recognise our absolute need for your spirit and all that he does for us. Comforter, counsellor, helper, guide, advisor, advocate, intercessor, mediator, encourager and so much more. He brings the truth of your word and your will for our lives. Help us, Father, to seek his power, wisdom and guidance daily so that we may truly live by the Spirit. In Jesus' name and for your glory. Amen. Loving Father, your Spirit also helps us to pray. And we bring before you now the needs of our church family, our nation and your world. We continue to pray for your wings of protection against this COVID over us all. And pray especially for those who are struggling in this lockdown. We ask your healing touch for Sheila, Pat Higgins, Jim and Cherry, Rosemary Arnold, and all known to us who are suffering in body, mind or spirit at this time. We name before you now. Come on. 
Compassionate Lord, in your mercy, touch each one with your healing, your strength, your peace, and may they know the blessing of your loving presence. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord Jesus, we now pray for all bereaved families. We bring before you our, all our Bethany friends, and especially those who have inquired about Bethany and those who have cont contacted us for individual support during this last week. And Father, we remember with sorrow the milestone number of deaths related to the virus. More than 100,000 families mourning loved ones and so many of them in our area. Loving Father, as we continue our prayers for Mike and his family, we name before you now grieving families known to us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We now pray for our church leaders, for Mark, T, Phil, Hannah and Rachel, and pray that you will inspire and protect them. We pray your blessing on all that goes out online, that it will be a challenge to all who watch, especially those who are not members of our church family. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Loving Father, we pray for an end to this terrible pandemic. We pray for scientists everywhere that you would guide them to more ways to defeat this disease. We thank you for the dedication of all our NHS workers, those exhausted physically and mentally by the daily giving of loving care to the sick and dying. Uphold, strengthen and protect each one, we pray. And we pray for our government that they would seek your will, as they have so many significant decisions to make regarding the health, well-being and financial state of our nation. Further, may your will be done. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Loving Father, we commit our world into your care. We believe that as you love your creation, so you are calling out to all people of every nation to return to you. We pray that just as the coronavirus has encircled your world, so too will such a revival has never been seen before. Lord Jesus, we pray for those we love, that there may be a great awakening amongst them, that they too may come to know you and the power of your Holy Spirit in their lives. We name before you now those we long to join us in your kingdom. Father, may your kingdom come in their hearts. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And to close, as we seek to be led by the Spirit and to live by the Spirit, this lovely prayer of St. Augustine. Breathe in me, O Holy Spirit, that my thoughts may all be holy. Act in me, O Holy Spirit, that my work too may be holy. Draw my heart, O Holy Spirit, that I love only what is holy. Strengthen me, O Holy Spirit, to defend all that is holy. Guard me then, O Holy Spirit, that I always may be holy. Amen. And we will now just end our time of prayer together by praying together as our Lord Jesus taught us to pray saying, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Before we end our time together this morning, um, I wanted to come before the Lord in song again. And we're going to sing a couple of songs. One, the first one is newer, 
and the other one is an old classic, one of my favorites. So we'll start by singing In Christ Alone, and then we'll sing together Amazing Grace.
God, your grace is truly amazing. The forgiveness that you offer freely to each of us. The Spirit, your Spirit, that you send to each of us. Father, thank you for these gifts, and we pray that we never take them for granted. Amen. It's been lovely worshipping with you this morning. Even if we've been apart physically, we have been together in spirit. It would be lovely if you could join us in the virtual tea and coffee, um, which we'll be meeting directly afterwards. Um, and in just a moment, after I go, there'll be some images up, uh, lovely images that some people in our church have taken. Um, and if you'd like to take some, some photographs and so we can make a similar slideshow of some of your images, then uh, please do send some of those in. I hope you have a blessed week. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen.